adaptation um, originally provided by Brad Sugar's chairman and CEO of Action Coach. Action Coach is the world's number one business coaching firm. Our, our vision is world abundance through business re-education and uh, I've always believed that every business performs better with a coach and there should be a coach in every business. But that's probably more true now uh, than it ever was before given the, uh, the current COVID uh, situation. Um, your business may have been shut down and may be reopening now, uh, may be preparing to reopen, may be uh, just beginning to do that. Very likely that reopening is gonna be more difficult than, uh, than shutting down was. And uh, action coaches all over the world are offering uh, additional uh, services and um, free consultations with every business owner uh, because it's our, our our vision to have world abundance for business re-education. So the goal is is really leave no one behind, um, provide the help that you can so businesses can come out of this situation and really thrive. That's me, um, Carl Shoemaker. Um, with Action Coach, um, offering to anybody who needs a free consultation so you can uh, take advantage of some of the information that's here in this uh, brief uh, webinar that I'm doing. Uh, please feel free to use it. Uh, if you have questions, you think I can provide you some additional guidance? Well, I, I know I can, but only if you ask for it, right? Um, so take advantage of that. You can call me, you can email me, you can contact me any way that makes you more comfortable. But let's, uh, let's see if we can provide the, uh, the guidance and the help that everybody needs so that uh, everyone can come out of this and have the strongest second half of the year that they've ever had, uh, get back to doing things, but just do it in a very um, careful, controlled, smart way. I'm not, I'm not giving advice and guidance on um, what you have to do to keep in compliance with government regulations. You'll get that from a lot of people. I'm talking about business and things you can do that can help your business uh, survive and then thrive, right? So the purpose of all this is let's review the nine uh, steps, the nine things you'd have to do to get yourself off to a great restart. Uh, you really want to have a uh, review of all the rules of the game. So you've got to know the local rules of the game, your town, your county, your state. Um, they're going to be posting a lot of the rules of the game. You're the leader, the owner of your business. You need to know what they are. Then very importantly, you have to communicate them to everybody on your team. Some of this is going to be rules and laws and regulations that you have to follow. And some of it's just going to be good old fashioned common sense, right? One of the things that you're going to have to do is, is obviously clean and screen, right? Clean the place, make sure it's a hundred percent. If it wasn't hundred percent before, it's got to be hundred percent. Now people are going to be sensitive to this, including your employees, your staff, your team, they're going to be concerned. You have to address their concerns. Screen people, tell people what to do if they're not feeling well. If they're part of your team and they're not feeling well, where should they be? Not at work, right? Um, people have to see and feel that you're doing everything you can possibly do to keep them safe. They, it's got to be real. And you've got to start trying to figure out how to put yourself in the shoes of people who are on the other side. People are coming to see you again, coming into your business, haven't been in, in a while. People are probably really yearning for the chance to get out and go to their favorite restaurant, their favorite watering hole, even just to shop um, or to get things done that they've been putting off. But you, they want to feel that you're taking everything, every step you can take to make sure that they're safe and make it visible and, and make sure that they understand it, right? You're doing it for them, not just for yourself, but for everybody, right? Being flexible is going to be a really important key as, as to what you're doing and what your team is doing, right? Um, things are not going to be as easy as they once were, but if you're careful and thoughtful and you think these steps out and you take advantage of every opportunity you can to communicate to people, that flexibility will pay dividends in the future. Maybe not up front, it might be more difficult, more costly, might be an impact on your margin, but if you do it right, these things will work, right? Um, 
your team is all about people and it's really more important than it ever was. It's about great people. If you're a business owner, I'm going to take a wild guess that what happens is as your business owner, you try to worry about everything. You try to worry about your team, your customers, your business, your suppliers, everything. What you really need to focus on is your team. Let your team take care of your customers. Give them the tools that they need. Give them confidence that you believe in what they're doing. Make sure they're trained. Provide the leadership they need. Um, and let them take care of your customers. You gotta think about flexibility in their hours, in their ability to work. Um, how about virtual work? You might have been virtually working for the past two months, right? Now we're gonna try to get opened up again. How is that gonna work going forward? Um, will you be able to socially distance when you have that many people in the building? When you have, do you have people, patients, customers, clients coming in and out? Are they gonna be comfortable? What, what steps have you uh, made for them to be comfortable when they come in and for your own team to be comfortable having people come into the office? Some of the obvious stuff, right? hand sanitizer, wipes, uh, maybe a staggered schedule so you don't have an office full of people, but you give people the ability to alternate, work from home one day, work from the office the next day, reduce the number of people who are in there, and then communicate, right? Communicate. Communicate to your community, communicate to your people inside, your team, right? Develop some standards and some protocols, right? Are you wearing masks? Are you wearing gloves? How often do you wipe the place down? Do people drop things off at your, at your uh, office? How about returns? Do you take returns or not take returns? If people are dropping things off, do you quarantine those things, packages, paperwork that they drop off? Things to think about, right? And communicate about. Don't get caught without having thought this through and talk to your team about it, right? you're not going to get to maximum productivity right off the bat because things are different. You probably were not as productive in virtual work as you were before because it takes time to adapt and get used to it. Getting back into with the actual additional steps you have to take with COVID is probably going to impact your productivity for a time, which is going to mean it's going to impact your profit margins for a time. Don't expect to make it all back up in a really short time. It will get there, but if you don't do it carefully, it won't get there the right way, right? Everyone is new again. Every employee is new again because they have to do things differently than they used to. Some businesses more so than less. In some cases, I know of businesses who shut down almost completely. I know of other businesses that had operated at a greatly reduced staff and operated at a much lower volume. And I know some businesses that actually had more business during the initial shutdown than they had prior, right? So there were certain businesses that adapted to this very well and they had a, 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 an offering or a service or a product that was highly sought after, right? If you were selling toilet paper, hand sanitizer, masks and gloves, guess what? Everybody was looking for you. Uh, but obviously other businesses like restaurants that couldn't use their dining room and had to switch over to delivery or curbside pickup, they had a completely different uh, thing to worry about, right? And they had to operate on a whole much lower volume than they were used to previously, right? So everybody's new again. They have to learn all over again what they used to do. Um, as you renew, as you relaunch, you want to consider how do I win back my customers? You know, how do I get them back? You might need different deals for a different target audience. Think about it. If you're a hair salon and people have not been able to come to you, what should you be doing now? Not sure this is the only thing you could do, but you could be sending them a postcard. You could be calling them up and telling them what your plans are. We are reopening as soon as next week or the week after, but we're gonna operate with these different parameters, right? We'll have, we'll have our staff wearing masks and wearing gloves. We'll only have 
two appointments per hour. We'll keep people six feet apart. We, we're taking steps to protect your health and your safety. You do a lot of things with this. You tell them, you're setting the stage, you're setting expectations, you're telling them when you're gonna be back and you're finding out, are they ready to come back or not? 80% of your business probably came, comes or came from 20% of your clients or customers. Great place to spend most of your initial focus, right? Um, talk about first responders. I, I haven't um, missed a chance to thank first responders. A lot of uh, people I network with, a lot of people that um, I'm associated with are really grateful for all the work that first responders put in. Offer them some special deals. Treat them specially. They deserve it, right? See if you can't offer some different deals for them. How about your existing customers, right? Talk about them. They're really like friends and family, right? If they've, helped, if they've stuck with you through this thing, if you haven't been able to work with them, you get a chance to work with them again. If they have been there, but on a much lower level, get started, make sure you take care of them first, but think about them first. And the more you tell them how you're thinking about them, the better off you'll be and they'll be too. Create opportunities for people to try you out, right? Start messaging. So again, there's at least three or four different layers of messaging out there. Think about the whole first month, at least, that you're doing this as your grand reopening, right? And that's what it really is. It's a grand reopening. You're opening up again in a different way. Even if you were open previously, you were open in a different way, you still want to be able to use that. Every marketing effort is a marketing message opportunity think about that. Make announcements, right? You're going to define a plan. So let's, let's get on with it. First definition of a plan, then execute the plan, right? Build some excitement up. Um, if you haven't created a strong social media presence, well, okay, the best time to create a strong social media presence was yesterday. The second best time is right now. So get on with it, build an audience, and then announce every step along the way of your plan. This is what we're doing. Use phone calls, use um, Facebook posts, use events, use uh, LinkedIn, use Twitter, use your, your website. Announce every step along the way in your plan. Announce your team members. Your clients and customers know about your team members. They come used to being served by them. Tell them who's back. Talk about them, right? Put that information out there so, again, people can get comfortable again with who's out there, who's coming back, who's going to be serving them, right? Every new deal you have, announce it, right? Hey, we're back. We're doing it. We're here. It's working. Put those dates out there and tell people about them, right? Whatever it is, communicate it. Um, why would you hide it, right? It's not a good idea. Uh, especially in the world of marketing and social media. You've got to outrun the other guy. If you don't, they'll get the attention you want. you got to celebrate. Um, we've been going through a rough time recently, a, a really rough time. And people are kind of really looking for the opportunities to get back to some normalcy. And I really think there's a lot of pent up demand so that the third quarter of this year, if we do it right, if we do it carefully, if we do it with thought, could be better than any quarter we've had recently, right? And until this COVID thing, things were probably pretty good for your business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. But let's get back to that. That pent up demand is there if we're carefully doing it. And celebrate those things, celebrate the wins, do a ribbon cutting, um, have some pictures taken, have a video taken, put it out there, communicate how things are getting back to normal slowly, but they're getting back to normal. I know a lot of people who are really anxious to get back to their favorite restaurant or get back to their favorite uh, adult beverage with a group of people, even if they have to stay six feet away from them, just to have a chance to get together and talk a bit. Um, and commune with people when instead of being locked up in the in home, right? So, about, celebrate the fact that we've that we've survived this. Um, you know, 
if you know people who have passed because of this, celebrate their life. Um, but be be especially hot, thankful for those people who've survived. Survived can mean a whole lot of different things to different people, but surviving in terms of your business, it's really still important, right? Celebrate your team. They're coming back to you. Um, celebrate the fact that they're still there for you. All right. Show gratitude to them that they're there. Number one motivating factor for most people's sight in terms of their team, right? It's does my boss appreciate me? Right? Does he does he or she say so? Right? Celebrate your customers. Where would you be without them? What if every one of them, like just like what happened in some businesses? Uh, a couple months ago, every one of them was told, hey, sorry, we're shutting down and, and we can only operate in a very limited fashion. Uh, we're back. Please come back to us, right? Celebrate your customers. Celebrate your community. Part of the previous message about offering special opportunity for your community. If you're here, if you're local, we're doing this for you. We're going to do that for you. We're going to offer you a special welcome back product or service just because we're so happy to be back and able to serve you guys again, right? Make it memorable, make it newsworthy, make a big deal out of it. It is a big deal. So put the word out there and then make sure everybody knows it, right? Here's is another, if, you're, if you don't know your numbers, right? You can't, you can't manage your business. You don't measure it, you can't manage it. Right. So every decision you make, frankly, now or even before, it either makes you money or costs you money. Knowing your numbers was always important. Now it's even more important. You need to run your numbers. You need to learn your numbers. You need to know things like your five ways. Um, you want to know about the five ways. Uh, send me a, an email. Give me a call. I'll uh, I actually record another video on five ways as well. You can look it up on my YouTube channel. I'll certainly send you a link to that if you like. Your five ways are essentially a really great set of leading indicators for how you run your business. It is the chassis. It's the, it's the frame. It's the, what makes up every business. Those numbers are really critical for you to understand how do you grow your business and grow it um, in a very successful way, right? You need to also know your break-even and your break-even profit margins. You understand on a transaction basis, if I do this transaction, if I make this sale, am I making money, right? You got to know your numbers. You got to understand what your costs are. You understand what your overheads are. If, you're, if your transactions are not covering cost of goods and overhead and leaving you a profit, um, then that's a losing formula, right? Now this first month back, there may be a lot of challenges to margin, right? We may be buying back some customers. We may be getting back into business and it may take a bit of time. But if you don't know your numbers, you're more likely to fail than to succeed, right? Government money, if you've got government money, use it wisely, use it carefully. If you applied for the EIDL or applied for PPP money and you got it, congratulations, great news, glad you got that, okay? You're now probably at a point of having to apply for forgiveness on that money. Applying for forgiveness is going to be more difficult, I'm not saying difficult in total, just more difficult or more involved and applying for the money in the first place. If you don't use the money the way it was prescribed, you could run the risk of having a problems with how much of it gets forgiven, which means then it becomes a loan. Talk to your accountant, talk to your CPA, your advisor about how to do that carefully to make sure you get the maximum benefit of using that money. If you don't use it carefully, it turns into a loan. All right. It's always good to have a proper amount of cash on hand. Cash is king. We've gone through a real difficult time. If you didn't, if you were short on cash, then you understood the squeeze 
of this pandemic has uh, put everybody through, you need to build up some reserves, right? If you've gone through your reserves, you need to get back to that situation where you start building reserves up again, all right? You've also got to rethink your marketing and sales. Um, everything in the world has changed, and it changed in such a rapid uh, way, it's kind of unprecedented, right? Uh, Brad Sugars is the chairman and CEO of Action Coach, and um, really got a great message here. You, your marketing message has to change. Um, and frankly, if you stopped doing marketing during the course of this pandemic, which unfortunately a lot of people did, well, guess what? You, you probably missed a bit of an opportunity to build a bigger audience. Um, so let's get back to doing that and um, let's get to work on that as soon as we can. Um, you need to operate in a different way. You need to educate people um, and you need to help them understand the benefit of doing business with you. Um, social media is not going away. It's not a fad. If you haven't spent the past couple of weeks working on it, okay, let's get to work on it now. Remember, people have a certain level of fear and worry. Just think about it. Try to put yourself in their shoes, right? Um, how, how, did you, how did you buy a car when you bought a car last time? You met with a salesman. You sat in a car. You took a test drive. You took a test drive with somebody right next to you. Now you hear about contactless purchase of cars, right? Um, how about your, your restaurant, your favorite restaurant? Would you went into the restaurant? Now, if you go into the restaurant, uh, is it a crowded restaurant? Is there someone sitting right next to you? How about the last trip you took on a plane or a cruise? What are you going to feel like when you're sitting next to somebody who you don't know um, in that next situation, wherever it is? How about if the person serving you food somehow touches your credit card or they touch someone else's credit card or money or whatever? What, what are you going to have to do as a business owner to make the customer feel better, reduce their worry, reduce their fear? Right? It's going to have more steps involved right, in every action you take. There's probably going to be a lot more steps involved in your sales process. Do you have a sales process? Is it well documented? Right? Are people anxious to buy from you very quickly? Or do you have to go through a real set of steps to meet them, to get them to be comfortable with you, to understand the value proposition you bring to them? You don't have your sales process documented, document it. Right. It may take a few more steps and it may take a little bit longer. And your marketing has got to fit. Your sales and marketing have to work together. Right? Do videos. If you haven't done any videos, start doing them. Ask people for testimonials. And video testimonials are great too because um, you can communicate them to people and very easily through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through a whole lot of platforms, Instagram, and many others and they'll connect a real live customer or client together with a new prospect okay so create videos um i'll tell you something that i've been doing with um, clients and i've been interviewing them in a kind of process where i interview and ask them about their business and i take that video and i share it across my social media platforms um, it's a, just an additional way to put information out there to help get them relaunched, um, consider doing some of that yourself. Record yourself on a video or members of your team. Great way to create commercials and then start putting the word out there. You know, when people walk into your place of business, if they've already seen a video of you, guess what? They, they begin to feel like they know you already and become more comfortable with you. Everything should be customer centric. Literally everything should be customer centric. Why? Because they may have walked into your business before and seen something that maybe wasn't the greatest in terms of, you know, contact or cleanliness or something that nobody ever thought about before. But now it's right in the front of their brain. It's going to put up a barrier. You don't need barriers to getting people back into your business, right? You want to take care of everything that could be possibly be an objection on their part in order to do business with you. Okay. Build your relationships, but build your database. Your database is a key to your marketing and a key to your sales, all your past clients, all your prospects, 
all your customers. If they work with you before, you've got one leg up on everybody else and you've got to talk to them and communicate to them. Number eight, thank everybody and rethink everybody. You know, saying thank you is just more than, more than good manners, it's good spiritually, right? So thank your customers. They've supported you, they've helped you. Maybe they were gone, maybe they're coming back. Thank your team for sure, absolutely critical. If every one of your team members left you, where would you be, right? Thank your suppliers, right? Maybe they cut you some additional slack during the course of all this. Maybe, maybe they were there for you with advice or with guidance, right? Thank your banker, thank your accountant, thank your CPA, thank, thank your business coach. If you don't have one, get one, right? Thank the people who helped you get through this. Send them, send them notes, send them handwritten notes. Give them a phone call, right? It's one of the highest level of communications is a direct phone call. Let them hear from you, right? And, or a video, use a video. Even the media, right? Your local politicians. Um, I don't know about you, but in my town, we get a recorded phone call five days a week telling us what the situation is in town. How about business owners? If you've got strategic alliance partners, people who you send business to and they send business to you, gosh, thank them too. Reconnect with them. Make sure you're Tell them how you're glad they're still around, how you're looking forward to do business with them again. Finally, we've kind of gone through a real difficult time, as you well know. The path to your business follows is really about to be decided now. So we took this situation that was really working pretty well, and we took a real dive through this COVID-19 situation. At the bottom of that, there had to be a decision. Do we survive, right? How do we come out of this? Now that we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, how do we drive out of this, right? What steps do we take? How tough do we, do we make it on ourselves or how tough are we? And can we get to the point where we really not just survive, but we drive through to really great performance and we thrive? It's going to depend on what we do and how we do it. What we do is important, how we do it is even more important, right? So we can get there, and if you've survived, great. Now, how many steps do we have to take? How much action do we need to we get to the point where we really thrive? Let's talk about that next, all right? So rewrite your plan. Hopefully you had a written plan, but if you didn't have a written plan, you gotta get one down. Going into business without a plan is like going on a mountain trek without a GPS, right? If you use a GPS in your life now, probably, I don't know, you're not traveling as much as you were, but whenever you were traveling, you used the GPS because you had to know where you were and you had to know where you wanted to be, right? So you don't want to get lost. You certainly don't want to starve. A business plan is like a GPS for your business. It was about a 90 day game to survive it. Now we need a 90 day plan for you to thrive, right? Cause you don't want to just survive. You've just done that. Let's get back, make up any lost ground. Let's really thrive. You need a plan. And that plan has a whole lot of components to it, right? Reopening may actually be harder than closing was. There are so many factors and so many things we've got to do. And we've got to, like we talked about earlier, rework every number you ever thought you had. Rework those numbers, put it down on a piece of paper. It's a marketing plan, it's a business plan, it's all of the above. You don't want simple mistakes, right? You don't want unforced errors in this business plan. The only way I know of um, to avoid you know, those kind of simple mistakes is to plan it out, to think through with some heads up time, working on your business, not just in it. So th put yourself in the perspective of your team members and your customers. Think about what they need and they want from you. Make sure your team is able to deliver it, right? Avoid simple mistakes. I think it was, a, I think it was Bruce Lee. I think it was a quote from Bruce 
Lee, who said he, he was not afraid of a man who knew 10,000 kicks. He was afraid of a man who knew one kick and practiced it 10,000 times. So practice, right? Strive for excellence. You also have to think about what could go wrong as well as what don't get caught with something that might go wrong. Think about the negative as well as the positive, right? Prepare for the difficult times as well as the positive. Get help. If you need help, get help, all right? Uh, I, I sometimes see reluctance when people point to ask for help. Um, get over it. Um, if you think there's somebody out there who can help you, ask them, all right? Um, I, I can tell you this, if you're a business owner anywhere in uh, North Jersey, guess what? I'd love to help you out. Um, I'll do a free consultation with any business owner who asks for it. Um, I'll help you put a plan together to get you going and get you started. Hopefully you can take and utilize these steps. We've been through a lockdown. We've got to get back into training to reopen. The lockdown's about to end. We've got to get warmed up. We've got to get ready to sprint. We got ready to move forward into a phase where we can really thrive. These are really the keys to getting you to where you need to be in your business, right? Um, I won't go through all the components of this particular slide. If you contact me, I will send you a PDF of this. In fact, I'll probably post this as well with this video. There's a continuous improvement mindset you should everyone who's a business owner should have. Every system and every process should be looked at. It was important before, it's important now, right? If it wasn't important before, maybe it's not important now, but you can't miss those steps and things that are really important. You need growth plans. You can't grow without a plan, right? You need to optimize your marketing. If you were spending marketing dollars before and weren't getting a return for it, well, let's get your marketing to where it's really producing so it delivers back more dollars than, you, than it costs you, right? You need to optimize that. You want a profitable commercial enterprise that works without you, and then you have a business. Otherwise, what you have is really a job. So to finish up, contact an action coach, get together with them, get a 90 day plan worked out, list five ideas, maybe things you just learned in watching this video, take action on them, you can do it, right? Work it out, work it out as a plan, prioritize, take those first five ideas and work them out, right? And if you have any questions, you wanna talk about it, you can reach me and I hope you do, right? That's me, Carl Shoemaker with Action Coach. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook. There's my website and Carl Shoemaker at actioncoach.com is my um, email address. You could also call me 201-300-6535. Again, if there's any way I can help, I want every business owner who hears this to know that there are resources out there that can help you not just with the, with the numbers, not just with applying for loans, not, but really figuring out how to develop a plan to take your business to the next level. Um, I hope you find this information helpful. Feel free to use it, please do. And if I can help you in any way, please give me a call. Thank you.